Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to your Energy Booster Podcast. This is your show host, Jeanette Padilla. And today, we are kicking off our September series entitled, Love in Action, the Galatians 514 Challenge. Over the next few weeks, we are going to dive deep into the powerful message of Galatians 514. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. This is such a rich and meaningful scripture, and I believe it has the power to transform not only our spiritual lives, but also our relationships, our communities, and the way we move through the world. So, let's get started today by exploring the heart of Galatians 5.14. Before we dive into what it means to love your neighbor as yourself, I think it's important to look at the context of this verse. Galatians 5 is all about freedom in Christ. Paul is writing to the Galatians because they were being misled into thinking that following the old Jewish laws was still necessary for salvation. Paul makes it clear that faith in Christ is what sets us free, and that freedom is expressed through love. Let's read a few verses earlier. Galatians 5, 13 to 14. You, my brothers and sisters, we are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't that incredible? Paul is summarizing the entire law with his one command, love. That means that if we get love right, we're fulfilling everything that God desires for us. To really understand what it means to love our neighbor, let's look at one of the most well-known stories that Jesus told, the parable of the Good Samaritan, found in Luke 10, 25 to 37. A lawyer once asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? In response, Jesus told a story about a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They beat him, took his clothes, and left him half dead. Two religious men, a priest and a Levite, saw the man lying there, but they passed on the other side. They ignored him. But then a Samaritan came by. Now, in that time, Samaritans and Jews didn't get along, and they certainly didn't consider each other neighbors. But the Samaritan, filled with compassion, stopped and helped the injured man. He bandaged his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. He even paid for the man's stay at the inn and promised to return and cover any additional expenses. Jesus finished the story by asking, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the lawyer answered, 
the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. This story is such a powerful example of what it means to love our neighbor. It goes beyond just loving the people we know or who we are or who are like us, brother. It's about showing compassion, mercy, and kindness to everyone, even those we might consider our enemies. Now that we've heard the parable, I want to challenge you to think about your own life. Who are the neighbors that God is calling you to love? It might be someone close to you, like a family member or a friend. Or it might be someone you don't know well. Maybe a co-worker, a stranger you pass on the street, or even someone you find difficult to love. Paul's message in Galatians 5.14 reminds us that love is a fulfillment of the law. It's not just a nice feeling or an idea. It's action. It's how we treat people, how we show up for them, how we serve them. It's about meeting people where they are and extending the grace and compassion that Jesus modeled for us. So, how do we put this love into action? How do we live out Galatians 4? or Galatians 5.14, in our everyday lives? Well, here's a simple three-step approach to start. Number one is reflection. Take a moment to reflect on your relationships. Who in your life could use more love and compassion from you right now? Maybe it's someone you've been avoiding because it's uncomfortable or someone you've taken for granted for so long. Number two, act of kindness. Choose one person this week and commit to showing them love in a tangible way. It could be something as simple as sending an encouraging message, helping them with a task, Or just taking the time to listen to them. The key is to be intentional about loving them in a way that reflects Christ's love. And number three is prayer. Ask God to help you see others through his eyes. Pray for a heart of compassion and for the strength to love others, even when it's hard. All right, friends, here's your challenge for this week. I want you to take that first step and love your neighbor as yourself. Pick one person, whether it's someone you know or even a stranger. Do something to show them love in a real, practical way. After you've done it, I would love to hear your stories. Send me a message or leave a comment about how it felt to take that step. Let's encourage each other as we grow in love together. Remember, love is the fulfillment of the law. When we love others, we are living out the very heart of God's commands. And when we start to live that way, we not only bless others, but we also experience the fullness of the freedom that Christ offers us. 
Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in next week as we continue this series and dive into the topic of loving yourself and why it is so essential to fulfilling this command. Until then, keep loving, keep growing, and remember, you are deeply loved by God. And before I forget, Feel free to check on the show notes below and don't forget to get the copy of the Spiritual Growth Journal so we can grow together in love and in faith. And we can focus on loving and serving others. I love you and God bless. Bye for now.